Family law is like the number one reason why you should never get married. I'm not saying don't have kids. I'm not saying don't have a relationship with a woman or women, whatever your game happens to be. I'm not saying any of those things. All I'm saying is don't ever live in a way that invites the government to decide what happens to your kids, to your assets, to your cash, to your investments, to your retirement fund, to your cars, planes, boats, and motorcycles, whatever toys you want to own, businesses, any kind of business income, any kind of business assets, all of that stuff. Why? Why would you want to complicate your life unnecessarily? I had this conversation, you know, with my lawyer after I got divorced. We've gotten together for lunch a few times. He's a good guy. Um, he's watched a few of my podcasts, actually, and uh, texted me out on them. But, you know, I asked him the same question that people often ask me, Rich, would you ever get married? And he said, no, there's I don't see any benefits in it. He goes, I've, resi I've resigned myself to being a lifelong bachelor. That's just the way that I'm going to be. And he's got a girlfriend and they live in separate homes and he's happy with his life. And if she doesn't like that, he lets her go. And he just replaces her, right? Um, far, far too many guys get far too attached to ego investments that they make in women and relationships, uh, you know, sugar and spice and all things nice, blah, blah, blah. One of the things people always say is, uh, well, who are you going to get to take care of you if you're sick? It's like, my girlfriend, you know, you don't need to get married to have somebody to take care of you if you get sick. Right? Like what kind of weak ass guy is that? You know, if you've got money and you're a competent guy, you can hire a nurse. It doesn't matter. Who's going to take care of you if you get sick? Nurse isn't going to take half your shit if you hire her to take care of you while you're sick. <laughs> do I really need to get that deep? How deep do I need to get into family law? You guys ask questions in the chat. I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye open for the uh, questions in the chat. And, uh, See if there's anything you want me to dive deep in when it comes to these notions that I'm presenting to you. Anyway, there's three other ones that I want to get into. And then I want to pop up this uh, married man blog that I found that was hilarious. Domestic violence is another very, very real threat. If a woman is unhappy with you, and one of the things you have to understand, guys, is women always reserve the right to change their mind at any given time, right? That's female nature, right? They, they just are that way. Okay. Um, unconditional love is, is one of the demands that men seem to have of women in relationships, which is a, a farce. Her love is conditional. It is entirely conditional on you providing something, um, whether it's resources or attention, but only women, this is Chris Rock line, by the way, only women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. Men are only loved under the condition that they provide something, right? So if a woman changes her mind about you and recognizes that domestic violence, that a alleged domestic violence, even not even domestic violence, but alleged, a lot of the times it's women cornering men and, and imposing themselves. I've, I've talked to guys that have had knives thrown at them, uh, jars, glass jars, like, um, Mason jars or like jam jars, you know, stuff like that. Um, I talked to a guy that got stabbed in the leg um, once by a woman. Um, this dude was going through a divorce. He hired me for some coaching. And it's like, w women will sometimes do violent things. And they don't even need to do violent things. They just have to allege that she's scared of you. And then the cops can, you know, she'll make a phone call. Cops are called. They come over, pick you up. And you're locked out of your house. I have a friend that um, got removed from his house. His wife cheated on him. And uh, she started, you know, during the whole divorce process and the separation period was acting very, very uh, like provocatively in the sense that she was trying to create uh, chaos and havoc, you know, between them, uh, you know, to escalate the situation. And she was lying about something to do with the cheating. Uh, you know, he caught her cheating and he just shook his finger in her face just like and called her a lot. He said, you're a fucking liar like that. And that was enough to get him removed from his own house and away from his kids right? Uh, domestic violence is no fucking joke. I'd like to talk about ways to minimize these risks. I'm going to look at the comments for that towards the end of the show. But seriously, domestic violence is no fucking joke. And if you live in a way that the state see, deems as a marriage, there are there's there's advantageous things that a woman can do 
to benefit her financially from a control perspective, from a power perspective, uh, by just alleging it. It doesn't even have to happen, okay? Just be aware of that. There's lots of stories out there. Um, I've told another one before where a guy came home from work and she was on the phone. He basically walked in the front door and she was on the phone with the police going, yeah, he just got here and I'm terrified and he's threatening to hurt me. And, blah, 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 blah. and 15, 12 minutes later, two cruisers come flying down the street, one up on his lawn, tears up his grass, picks him up, takes him off, right? Alleged domestic violence is all that's required. So if you're living in such a way that the government sees as uh, marriage, whether you've declared you know, your, your, your vows in front of a, a priest, a church, uh, you know, at the courthouse, whatever way you decide to do it, at the drive through in Vegas with the Elvis priest, whatever way you decide to do it, if you live in such a way that applies family law, which can be used with domestic violence, you're exposing yourself to risk un unnecessarily. Remember, marriage is very high reward, low risk for women. But for men, it's high risk and low reward. And I'm going to talk about some of those low reward issues in a bit um, as we kind of dive down through this. But let's keep moving on. Um, actually, let me just pause over here on my notes and just go up a little bit because there was a couple of questions I saw that looked interesting. How about dying alone? Everybody dies alone, bro. <laughs> Everybody. I Look, I know probably three or four people that died in the last year and they all died alone like st stupid ways. Like I even said, like at one point, like, I can't believe this is how people go, right? Like by themselves in a fucking hospital, nobody can come and see you. And it's like, that's it. Right. Everybody, dude, everybody dies alone. That's like one of the biggest, like crybaby beta ass reasons that I hear guys get married is because they don't want to die alone. Everybody dies alone. You think you're going to be lying there in bed, holding hands with your wife, your girlfriend, your long-term partner, whatever the hell you want to call them, singing Kumbaya and you both die simultaneously. It doesn't work that way. Dad got arrested and pulled from his house. He did nothing wrong. It, yeah. It, like I know guys that have, that have like, they've been taken away and they come back and there's long standing consequences to that too. I know a guy that is unable to obtain uh, firearms in his state anymore because of a false domestic violence allegation. Right. So what he's got to do, he's got to move states like that's really the only only way that you can deal with that. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Right. Hey, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments. There's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code alpha10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis. And that gives you a little bit of a discount and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.